Hey third graders, happy spring break. I'm gonna finish up this book today, The Story Thieves. There's a few more chapters and I'm gonna um, finish it up so that we can start a fresh book when spring break is over. Chapter 40. The science soldiers push Charm's floating structure through the halls of the presidential palace and Owen followed, trying not to stare at the wonders around him. Water flowed against gravity in the energy fields that transported it to the higher floors. Lights exploded at atomic levels. Miniature nuclear bombs that continually formed a new, new odd atoms then split those, creating perpetual lights without using their energy. And then there were the hooligan, excuse me, holograms. As far as Owen could tell, the palace was filled with people unlike the city outside. Yet no one was real. Everyone used the same kind of hologram technology that Dr. Veretti had used on their spaceship, going about their business while their bodies stayed home. It was almost like the Knoll Walk, just the fewer ads. The science soldiers walked right through the holograms, at least the ones that didn't pay attention enough to step out of the way. Just to test, Owen ran a hand through a hologram of a man and what looked like to be a formal uniform of some kind. The man gave him a strange look, and beneath his helmet, Owen blushed. Whoops. The robots continued on into the palace, finally arriving at the largest, most expensive looking of all the rooms Owen had seen so far. This seemed to be some kind of audience chamber for the president, and it was empty of people, holograms, and soldiers. The clank of robot feet on the glass floor seemed extra loud as the science soldiers walked charm through an extremely long desk made of brown wood sculpted to look like wood. The chair behind the desk turned and Dr. Veretti pushed to his feet, a wild smile on his face. Welcome soldiers, he said, and he gestured for them to line up before him. The soldiers immediately moved to stand at attention. Charm's unconscious body floated just in front of the line. Owen quickly took a spot at the end of the line and tried his best to stand as still as possible in the same pose as the rest. Commander report, Dr. Brady said, stepping in front of Charm's body. I see you have found the missing daughter of the former president. Affirmation, the commander said in his monotone voice. Criminal charm, Mentum was located in the crash site of the spaceship previously licensed to her father. The former president, Mentum, now deceased, spaceship is now unusable due to... Dr. Veretti waved his hand. I don't care. What about the boy? No young human male was located. Dr. Veretti smiled. Oh, yes, he was. There was indeed a young human male located at the crash site, but we can get into that later. For now, there are more important matters to discuss. He reached down and touched Charm's cheek, shaking his head sadly. It didn't need to come to this, Miss Mentum. You never should have survived the first attack on your family, honestly. Owen gritted his teeth to keep still while Dr. Veretti turned his back inside. And now you've gone and injured yourself even further, which surprises me. I figured you'd survive the crash over the boy. But could it be? Did you protect him? He began to laugh, then patted her shoulder. Oh, my dear girl, what a waste. Orders, sir, the science soldier commander asked. But Dr. Veretti just waved his hand again. I'm not finished, commander. You see, things are about to change. My armies are now even beginning their attacks on Magisteria. And without the Magister, those pathetic ma magic users will have no one to organize them, to lead them against my anti-magic robots about all realities. He stopped, as if considering things. Still, those spell eaters will do their best to defend themselves, casting their disgusting magic and such. Why waste the time and energy to fight them? Why not just use our new weapon? Weapon, sir? 
Why, the very same one that Kiel Nomenfoot hoped to use against me, Commander. The one he journeyed all the way here to find. You see, the fabled source of magic has been locked away under this palace for thousands and thousands of years. When the first magic users used Quantarium, they hid the source inside the vault of containment to keep it safe. Here in a world of science? He snorted. <laughs> Truly disgusting. That's been here so long. But I've developed a weapon, a bomb, really. It's quite simple. It takes the power of the source of magic, recognizes any quantum connection between the source and those who have ever used the magic, anyone of all of history, and destroys them. Rather, rather dramatically, too, I'd imagine. I'm hoping they'll be burned from the inside out, personally. He smiled. Billions will die, of course, he said, throughout space and time, but magic will quite truly be no more, and it will be all thanks to the Magistry of Science. A bomb? That's what this had all been about? Everything Keel and Charm had done, seven books of finding keys, and it's all been a manipulation? A trap on Dr. Veretti's part? And now here Owen was with the first six keys and Hart for the seventh, delivering them right to Dr. Veretti. He had to escape before the doctor found him. Dr. Veretti stopped and glanced at the science soldier. No questions, Commander? No, sir. Obedience, Dr. Veretti said, clapping his hands. I love obedience. The first part of all of this, though, Commander, is that I shouldn't have been able to do any of this. You see, those clever little magic users thought of everything. They knew that we pure, true-hearted scientists might someday want to destroy their precious source. So they ensured that the only scientist working with a magic user could possibly locate all the keys to open the vault. He grinned. But what self-respecting quantum would ever associate with a magisterian? I needed a magician if I were ever to hope to get into that vault. And he made a face. Given that I was once one of those horrible creatures myself thousands of years ago, I know how things work there. Dr. Peretti gave the commander a look. And when the doc robot didn't say anything, the scientist hit a button. The robot jolted, then asked, Work, sir. Science builds upon what exists, Commander, just like logic. But magic, dirty, horrible magic, creates something nothing once existed. And magic so infuses Mysteria now that it's changed how life there works. He shook his head. There, those with nothing inevitably become the most important, orphans, forgotten children. The least among the least. Magisteria makes those downtrodden and builds them up, just like magic does. He looked disgusted. You should see their greatest heroes. All came from nothing. It's almost a cliche there now. But when one understands the reasoning, why then? One, I can work with. All I had to do was drop a child into one of those cities produce a threat, and sit back waiting for my hero. Nothing could have been easier. He hit the button again and the commander jumped. Hero, sir. But I needed a trustworthy child, Dr. Brady told the robot. One I could count on to follow through and eventually see things my way. And since I trust no one but myself, I had no choice but to clone myself. And it worked. My old friend, the Magisteria, found the little me and taught the boy everything he needed to know to deliver me the keys. And do you know what, Commander? No, sir. Dr. Ferretti leaned forward and looked around to, see if, to check to see if anyone was listening. Then he whispered, I think that boy might have found the last one, the seventh key, the one that was destroyed. Dr. Ferretti waited for a reaction, but got none from the science soldier. Finally, the doctor sighed and shook his head. You're a terrible audience, you know that? Yes, sir. Good, Dr. Bertie said. Now, if only there was someone else here to listen to me go on like this. 
Someone who thinks he's disguised, tricking me into letting me run free in the presidential palace so he could open up the vault and use the source of magic against me. Uh-oh. Kill? Dr. Freddy said, and the other science soldiers all took one large step back. Owen quickly did the same, but far too late. Oh, Keel, let's not play this game anymore, the doctor said, picking up the laser rifle almost three feet long from the desk and aiming it right at Owen. Please, you're insulting my intelligence. And if there's one thing I absolutely won't stand for is an insult of my intelligence. Owen winced and pulled off his mask. Ah, there he is, Dr. Verretti said, beaming. The apprentice magician, the one destined to defeat the big bad Dr. Verretti, the clone himself, ready to take shot at the real deal. He winked. You are quite intimidating. And then Dr. Verretti shot Owen right in the chest with the laser rifle. Well, at least you were the doctor said. Commander, have your soldiers search his body for the keys. He grinned widely. It's time I got to play with a weapon of magical destruction.